Welcome back to Brew Pig. So we've got a couple of things that we need to do to make the boat seaworthy. Well, when I say a couple, yeah, it's a couple. We'll knock it over in a weekend. Brew Pig was a sunken fishing trawler that was stripped out and ready for the scrapyard. She's just completed a 10 year rebuild that's brought her back to life. With the help of volunteers and funded by our Patreons, community and subscribers, she'll be crewed by passionate people from around the world. If you'd like to be involved and support the project, please consider joining us on Patreon or subscribe to the channel. There's a link in the description below. I've started putting stuff that was on the rear deck. This is tools and things from various jobs. They need to go into the engine room and I'm clearing out this back end. So we want this to be spotless, but we need a decent workbench. So the job for the next day is to make this into an awesome workspace. Now, whatever we put out here is gonna get destroyed. It's gonna get welded on, painted on. It's gonna get holes drilled in it. It's gonna get all sorts of stuff, slag, cuts and whatever put into it. So we're not gonna do anything decent like stainless or anything expensive. We're gonna do a scabby old bit of plywood. We're gonna make sure it's gonna last for at least 12 months. And then when that falls apart, we'll probably replace it with another scabby bit of old plywood. So I'll just unscrew this piece of timber like that. Trim a couple of bits of six for two that are screwed to the base of this plywood. All right, cleaned off, adjusted. I've screwed it to the top of this aluminium box, so that's now a leg, and I'm gonna fasten it to that guy over there, so that'll become a leg. We've created a space in the middle so that we can start putting our stuff like saw horses and whatnot in there. However, we should probably give us a bit of a clean up. Look at that, I sanded right through to a new coat of paint. Don't get me wrong, it's looking lovely, but we found a small problem. Stuff can roll off the back. So we need to create a small lip. When have we ever put a small lip on something? Of course I was going to over-engineer it. The fit out begins. Eh, we can sharpen drills, but we probably need a drill press. Hmm. The mag drill needs a thick piece of mild steel to mean it onto. Right, while we wait for the drill press to dry, and I have a small space of bench available, I'm going to start working on a template for the anchor chain stripper. If you cast your mind back all those many moons ago when we did our sea trial, you can see we had a wee bit of an issue with our anchor chain, when it started to make a little bit of a bird's nest on the winch, and then Burke so accurately described it as... Jesus! Got a wee bit of a coil up here. So we needed a solution, and my mind immediately went to a stripper. A chain stripper, obviously. This is my template. It's not going to make any sense, so I'll do a drawing. Rightio, the chain gypsy is sort of two circles inner and outer, and you've got the winch itself that sits like that. Down here, you've got a little hawse pipe, and uh, this is the front of the boat in that direction there. So the chain goes basically around here and down through the hawse pipe and into a great big chain bucket underneath the deck. And the deck runs along there, front of the boat here and then water line down here. Kind of gives you a general layout and the side of the boat extends up like this. Handrails to give you an idea as to where everything is on the boat. And the bow roller sits uh, somewhere out here like that. So the chain sort of goes down to that bow roller and then off to the anchor. Let's, let's just draw a little fisherman's anchor in there so everybody knows. All right, the issue that we're having is the chain, instead of coming down and cleanly dropping into this hawse pipe here, it was sort of going around and binding up in this area here. So the chain stripper fits up in this area like that with some bolts to hold it on. And essentially what it does is it stops the chain having a path to go forward. So it just basically blocks that chain, gets in the way of the chain and then forces it to go down into this uh, horse pipe down in here. So uh, that's the plan. That's what it's gonna look like roughly um, and hopefully that makes sense. The reason why I've designed it, then it actually sits like that. So there's a bit of a swish towards the back of the chain gypsy. So as the chain comes around, this will bump it off the gypsy. So it'll basically jam it off the gypsy and it'll drop it down into the horse pipe here. I've also added one on the front as well, because when we're anchoring, we need to let out what's called a snubber. So a snubber is basically a, a nylon rope that connects to the boat and then connects to the chain itself. And then you let the slack off the winch so you don't you don't ever want to be sitting on hanging off your winch you want to take the slack off your winch but you also for noise reasons you don't want to be hanging off the chain so you want to be hanging off a snubber so a snubber is basically you have the anchor on the bottom of the seabed then you've got chain coming up to a hook 
and then that hook connects to a nylon rope which goes up to the boat which is tied off on the boat and that nylon rope acts like a shock absorber and it stops the noise transferring up the train over the bow roller and into the steel of the hull because you'll hear it all night so as the boat moves from left to right and so on and the chain flips from side to side you'll hear it all night go glum, 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 and, and it's really difficult to sleep when you're up the front of the boat. So the snubber is basically to stop a lot of that noise. Um, it also acts as a really good at shock absorber because you've got a big bit of nylon rope, about 30 mil nylon rope in our case, it's quite stretchy. So when a big wave pushes the boat backwards, that nylon rope will act like a shock absorber and then pull you back as opposed to a sudden stop with the chain and it'd be a really difficult and uncomfortable motion. So a while back when we were at the scrappy, we found this stainless bat signal. It's 12 mil 316 stainless, as somebody's obviously written there before. So we just need to find a convenient way to cut this out of that whole shape that'll do because we need to keep a small square somewhere um, so that we can make this bottom piece so we're going to weld the bottom piece in i'm going to bolt this piece to that bottom this morning we're going to go for a ride in pat's tug he's uh, heading to work, so he'll be away for three months. Um, he's got a few jobs going on, one in Singapore, then in Bhutan and uh, Indonesia, and then he's going to a job in India, oh, then UK, then India, so he's all over the place, and then he's back in three months' time. But we're gonna go for a burn in this thing and uh, get the engine all warmed up and cleaned out and everything before the boat sits for three months. That's 1,200, what do you normally cruise at? Uh, 1,000 feet, 
I'm going to put that on. Um, we can't afford to buy two vices, so we're going to rob that vice and remove the one from the engine bay for now. And then when we need it in the engine bay, we're going to put it back down. So it's time to get that up onto the workbench. Yeah. See how long that one lasts? Yeah. We'll eventually organise to have another vice up here. Two would be great on the boat. Ooh, look at that. Yeah. That's great. Bit of welding on there would be brilliant. Time to get this guy bolted down. I don't know the exact size of these bolts, but they're pretty massive. Right, here we go. Anatomy of a tiny workbench vice that can rotate on its axis here, so we can use it over here or over here. Spin it around, and we can flip the jaws around, and we have pipe jaws on the bottom and regular flat jaws at the top. Awesome vice. Mag drill. This thing is a tank of a machine. We've used it for years. It's absolutely awesome. It's got its own... It's a 20 mil thick plate base here, routed into the bench and epoxy down, and this can come on and off as needed, and we can rotate this around and get this out of the way if we need something bigger in here, and we've got the ability to clamp under the bench here as well. That's that end done. Ceramic tile, so this allows us to weld onto here without setting the bench on fire. So um, we've got that guy there, and these are cheapest chips, so when we, when we break these, because they do break after a while, we can just get replacements. Our $40 grinder that we found at the tender center. Um, this thing's been awesome, so we've bolted that down as well. Got a power point at the top, and we've got some outboard storage at the end. Well, we need to work both. So we're going to go and have a look at that thing between us, so we're here at the moment. Pretty big. That sounds good, there. Our winch is bigger than that. <laughs> <laughs> we're well sheltered from that um, side. Yeah. Uh, swell, eh? And just steer it straight in forward and, and park up. We've got heaps of steering, we'll do that. And then when we need to go out, we can just use the prop wall to turn us into there and then go straight out forward. What about? Um, it's 11.9 metres from wharf to wharf, yeah. and that's four and a half metres. And we're five and a half metres, so um, it should be a, we'll have a couple of metres between us. We don't need a, have a thing no, between no, us. No, no, no. There's right. a couple of fingers on this side. Yeah, I just wasn't sure how, how tight it was going to be. I thought it was tighter to get in, but that looks fine. We're not going to do any boat work, though. We've got a lot to do. We're not do it. No, not with the breed. I'm going to have to go naked. So Maybe we should try and get that, um, the size painted, you know, the little... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get them sanded and painted and... I feel like a quick zoom now that we're in the boat. <laughs> I think, I think it's an important step. The hard work's all been done. Getting us in the boat, getting the boat in the water. You got enough uh, gas? Yeah. Is that um, venting? Yep, we're at No. Do have a bit of venting going on? Okay. All right. right. It's really pouring. Yeah, uh, it's pouring out, eh? It's pulling quite a bit of sand, eh? Yeah, yeah. That's pretty cool. Uh, where we are in the marina, uh, they've been so awesome having us be here. This is a work booth. You can see over here, there's uh, three other work booths over there, and Pat's boat is on the other spot for our, our little pontoon. But a commercial boat that comes here um, before the season starts in March is going to need this spot. And they've been so great. Thank you, you guys, for letting us be here. But we need to go out into the marina with the other boats. Uh, so to do that, we need to be able to tie off because we're going to have to. We're going to be along a pontoon on this side of the boat, so we need to be able to tie off on the side against that that arm. So <laughs> we need to we need to build a bollard. So um, there's a thing you like this to tie our pontoon. But I'll show you where we're doing it. It needs to be kind of midway down the boat, just for leverage purposes. You know, this is the thing that will snatch a rope on. Uh, I think it's called a springer, a springer. You tie off as you're pulling the boat in or parking. Uh, I don't know, berthing. <laughs> I can, you don't park a boat. Berthing, I think that's what you do with whales, isn't it? <laughs> when there's a new one being made. <laughs> Maybe so that's how boats are actually made. So we're going to go. <laughs> Sorry, I'll stop talking now. <laughs> Dave's just had lots of food, so he's like, he's, he's jacked up on like calories. He's ready to build some stuff. <laughs> we're both hanging out to build some proper stuff. Anyway, listen. So what we're going to do is when we're going to come um, front in when we move the boat, it's probably in a day or two. So we need to get this done. 
we're going to come front in. We're going to have uh, it tied up on the dock, and then I'm going to put it around this bonnet. I'm going to put it around this bonnet. <laughs> I'm gonna, so close. I'm going to put it around this bollard and um, and then we'll pull it in. So because where we're going, there's a boat, fiberglass boat, tiny little thing, right next to us. That if we scrape along that, we'll take half the boat with us. So we've got to be very careful. So we're, we're being extra cautious and we're getting this done now. What we are doing, we were thinking we could tie it around on something on the side. Like, just tie it around something and, and be fine, you know. But this is all part of getting independent. So we figure we'll just do it right now. Um, and as you can imagine, Dame's designed it. We've talked about it, and Dame's designed it so that it's the gruntiest thing ever. It's not just sitting on here. It's going in there, half in, and it's going into it, getting welded to the deck. Of course, one long piece. We'll show you. This becomes this. <laughs> when to become one. So this uh, big chunky piece down the middle is, uh, what have we got, three and a half, four inch? Three and a half inch, something like that. It's pretty thick. It's but it's thick wall, look. Six mil thick wall. Then gets the smaller piece, the holes drilled into the big piece, and this gets slid through and welded in. Now this gets welded to the deck down here, and then roughly here somewhere is where the side of the boat is, the the bo uh, the boards. So um, and the deck is at about this level here, something like that. So, so it's a bollard going on bullocks. A bollard going on a bullock. Bullock. For a springer. <laughs> For a springer. Yeah, there we go. Proper, proper nautical terms. Proper boat. <laughs> Woo! Oh my God. Yeah, they got wings on it. I remember them put that on oh, a year or two ago. This becomes that. This piece of stainless that I'm drilling out here is a matched piece of stainless for the stripper. I weld this to the deck and the stripper bolts to this. Rather than using a bolt with a nut on the back, I'm drilling and tapping this piece of stainless so that we can bolt straight into the stainless without the need for the nut. The best part is no part.
Lovely. And then finally I drill a 12mm clearance hole on the stripper side. And countersink both sides. Bolts on the back there you can see. Turn that over. That bolt comes all the way through, it's not fully tight yet. So they're going to be nice, I'll lock tight those in. That'll weld onto the deck like that. You sort of see that like so. And then this bolts to it. So time to get two more of these Allen key bolts popped in there, cap screws popped in there, and that's going to hold it nicely onto the deck. Built! So three bolts, you can see the two layers there, so I need to weld that smaller, that piece at the bottom there, I need to weld that into the base on the deck, and then this part here slots up really nicely into the chain gypsy, so we'll get it welded down, tacked down, and then I'll show you how it all works. Can be a pig to fit in. There we go. Right, let's weld that in. The clay wind. So burnt paint aside, obviously we need to deal with that. Full penetration weld on both sides. So it's TIG weld, I'm only gonna do one pass because it doesn't need massive strength. This thing here, when I welded, when I made that and welded that on, we did three passes on each side. So it's got uh, six, three on each side. This one I've only got a single, it's all it needs. So let's bolt this on, see if it works. There you go, you can see how it sits. So up in the chain itself, you can see it barely clears the gypsy. And then at the very back end, you can see over there, it kind of guides it down into that hose pipe there. The hose pipe could do with being moved back about maybe 20 mil, um, three quarters of an inch, something like that. Uh, I'm not gonna do that though, because with this, I shouldn't need to do that. Um, if there is a problem, I'll just cut it out, put a bigger one in, but uh, yeah, for now we're just going to try it as is and see if that's enough to solve the problem. It's been a week of a dozen seasons, so yesterday it was 34 degrees, which doesn't sound like a lot, but up here you get a lot of humidity, so 34 degrees is all of the 34 degrees, it's pretty uncomfortably warm. So as soon as you put a shirt on, it's liquid from sweat, that's even in the shade. So we've got some shade cloths to try and make life a bit more bearable up the front of the boat, and today it's kind of the opposite, it's grey and miserable and cold. We had a big old storm come through last night. We thought it was going to pummel us with rain, but we got absolutely nothing and it bypassed us and went right over the back of the, the river there, which is quite common here. We call it the Burnett Heads bubble. So where we are is Burnett Heads and it just seems to split cells all the time. So whenever you've got a storm cell coming in from the inland side of Australia and heading out towards the sea, just always seems to part and split and go left and right of Burnett Heads. So it's exactly what happened last night. Before we can check the winch, we have to fix the oil leak on this filter. So that was one of the other issues that turned up in our sea trial. Pretty sure the leak is coming from this part here. So just taking this pipe off and see if we can investigate that, find out what's going on. I'm not 100% certain what fitting this uh, filter needs to have in it. This is, a, I think it's got a tapered 45 degree at the very end. So it obviously drives into a socket type arrangement and I don't think the filter has. I'm guessing maybe the filter had some sort of like copper washer. No, it won't be copper because it's aluminium. I don't know. I don't know enough about this type of filter connection yet to understand why it's leaking. It could just be that this is not even tight enough. So I cleaned off the uh, thread sealer that I had on the surface. It looks like it's a taper. It's a wee bit hard to tell, but I'm pretty sure that's a taper. So I think it just wasn't tight enough. Um, there was plenty of thread sealing on there. That wasn't the issue. I think it was more just the fact that because I have to have it located in a certain way, it actually, I was able to tighten it up another 90 degrees. So I think it was just a case it wasn't tight enough, but I don't have that luxury. It has to be where it is. So I'm going to put more thread sealing on see if I can gum it up in that way and if that doesn't work then I'm going to have to come up with a different solution so if anybody knows if you can get right angle hydraulic fittings like this that have like a 
um, a joint where you can rotate it any which direction. Um, I don't even know if they're, they're a thing, but it'd be awesome to get one of those. Um, I don't know anything about them yet, so if anybody knows about hydraulics and knows if that's possible, can you let us know in the comments? Because I'd love to be able to solve this properly. All right, fixed and back together for now. Time to start up and see if this winch works. Oh, by the way, we figured out that there's a green light when the winch is ready to go up top. Fuck it. Bring the safety helmet so I don't hit my head. You can see it's just halfway there. Good. Remember to tighten it up. Oh. So close it up, let's put it on the air So it's above high, so it's good. Was but telling me earlier, because there was that leak, there's not much in the um, filter, and the pipes are a little bit thin too, so that'll, that'll go down as the motor starts. Stop a baby! <laughs> By the engine up, we need to go and see if this actually works. So, moment of truth. Down's the easy bit. We need to figure out if up is the problem. But down's good because we can get a bit of weight on this anchor, which is where the problem really happens. Normally if we were anchoring, I'd just undo the brake and drop it. But I don't really want to put the anchor down too far because I'll bring all the mud back up onto the deck. Let's see if it actually works. Shut it down, Jess! While Damien and I continue to play with big engines and get the boat ready to go on anchor and soon offshore, Burke is home after spending a couple of days with Duncan on the Sunshine Coast. Duncan gave him a flight in a rented two-seater sling before he headed home. Burke flew out of Brisbane, Australia and stopped in Dubai, then landed in Germany. home in time for a white Christmas.